What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick Tens. Today, I'm gonna give you guys a little walkthrough of the 17 foot Grumman customer build. He did a killer job on this thing. I did supply him with some of the dry hatch track for his recessed hatches, but I mean, all in all, for a customer build, I think the quality is very superior. impressed with the entire you know craftsmanship and layout of this hole guy did a really good job I mean, start to finish everything's welded there's lots of uh, hatches it's got lots of storage he's got this brand new motor guide tour trolling motor on here this thing is sick I've actually never even seen one of these but um, it looks pretty badass it's, the head of this thing is massive it's just it's the size of a five horsepower outboard motor easily and he's got a recessed foot pedal tray in here and he's got one of these th marine graph bridges and he's got a little, a little orange elite up there it's a nice setup all his wires and everything nice and neat he's got a seat pedestal base one of the cool things he did in this boat was he laid them out with the three center storage compartments now these two right here are pretty similar in size and all these have locking keys on them but uh his carpet job inside of here is really good I mean I was very impressed with that he carpeted inside of all the hatches and he's running this gray ortho deck uh, brush finish on top of that he's got those two and then this one actually houses his batteries in it his battery charger which I think is a pretty cool idea because it kind of balances out the weight it sits in the center of the hole and it's easily accessible he's got a big storage hatch on this side, um, this is rod locker actually. Uh, this thing is pretty good size. I mean, it runs all the way up here. I think it's, I think it's nine and a half foot long last time we measured it. But uh, all these hatches have the drain tubes in them. So keep just everything inside there nice and dry. It's kind of different the way this one's set up without the back bench seat. And um, I kind of like the way it is. I mean, it's pretty cool because He's got this sweet Millennium seat in here, and he's got his fish finder right here. He's got his cup holder. And this hatch on the side right here, this just houses his gas tank. It's very clean looking though. He's got kind of a mirror image deal going on on the other side. And, um, if you're looking at this hatch, I'm pretty sure this is actually his rod locker. This one runs way up in there. It's about nine and a half feet. The one on that side is about seven foot, but it's still a very huge storage compartment. And uh, this thing looks sick, man. He did a killer job on it. Right behind that, he's got a big custom live well. He actually painted the inside of this live well to match, and I think it's pretty cool. I've never really painted one, so I'm kind of interested to see how it holds up. He's got the flow right system in here. All this plumbing and everything is, is housed right behind here, so you can get to it pretty easily. The 
This seat's pretty comfortable. I've actually never sat in one of these, but uh, I'm pretty impressed. So this is this hatch he has for his electrical down here on the side. And it's pretty cool because it's out of the way. You don't have to worry about hitting it or knocking any switches on with your feet. But it's pretty simple. I mean, it's not got a ton of stuff going on, but it's got the necessities in there. It's actually pretty good distance right here for driving. I mean, I feel comfortable. Without the bench seat in here, I was kind of worried of how this thing was going to set up. But being able to sit here and have your feet right next to you, I feel like I could drive this thing pretty easily. He did a cool thing with this where he cut down and made like a dog step box on the back. This was actually the original hole on the bottom. He just chopped this area out and capped it off to make like a, a dog box so the dogs can get in and out of the boat or easier during hunting season. Um, and he built these, uh, you know, tubing coming up here to mount the motor on and the power poles. These power poles are pretty neat. Let me show you all how this works. They're just manual poles. Got a strap on it. It's pretty cool. These are the Roy's power poles. He purchased these. I mean, the technology in this thing is stupid simple. Um, I could probably build these extremely easy but definitely seems like it would get the job done these are his front nav lights up here he's got them on either sides he's got a brand new trailer on this thing it fits really well the bottom part of this boot is actually painted with some like racing paint I mean, it's insane the difference in the texture of this and where the black is at. I mean, it's just slick. It's so slick. This thing probably probably makes a big difference on the water. Colorway is really cool too. I mean, it's simple, the gray on gray, but it's almost like a battleship or something. It's got a brand new Tahatsu 99 on here. Um, pretty positive it has a 20 ECU upgrade on it. But he said he was getting this thing up to speeds for about 20 miles an hour. It's a pretty large boat. I mean, 17 foot long. Um, it's a lot bigger than some of the smaller John boats that I build. So 20 miles an hour is pretty decent, especially considering all the metal and weight that he added into this thing. All in all though, I think he killed this thing. I give him big ups and mad props for this build. Everything looks really professional. He's got grommets for all his hoses and wires. Power poles are cool. Definitely very simply made. I do like this rear uh, anchor light. This thing is like a indestructible. Uh, it's got some like crazy fiberglass pole or something on it. But um, it's supposed to be heavy duty. And when he doesn't need it, it just folds right down and get it out the way. Definitely have to look into some of those. That's pretty sick. All in all though, this dude has one badass rig and he did it all himself with a little help from the tin can killer and some of my products. The only thing it's missing, some Trick Tins logos. All right. So I'm pretty impressed with this boat. This guy did a killer job on it. It looks by far the best customer built boat I've ever seen. Um, I'm very thankful he let me do a little walkthrough video of this thing and brought it back because I really wanted to see what it looked like when it's all said and done. And he killed it. So on a different note, I know a lot of you guys have already seen or heard the news, but I'm actually getting ready to travel to Texas. I'm gonna team up with Rob Turkla and with Lunkers TV and the Guggens, we're going to do a build. It's going to be sick. Uh, he purchased a Alumacraft 175. Uh, it's kind of set up as a bass boat already. Uh, I'm going to do any and everything I can to it in the short amount of time I'm going to be there. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be sick. It's a huge networking opportunity for me. 
and I am really excited about this one. So make sure you guys check that out. The videos are going to run on Lunkers TV YouTube channel. So you're probably already following them. So just go check them out. They're going to be dropping soon. He's already dropped one video and guys a little wild. I'm not exactly quite sure what I'm getting myself into, but you know me, I'm game. Thanks for watching guys. Hit that like, subscribe button, share this video. Let me know what you guys think about this boat. If you like it, if you have any you know, thoughts or any comments, leave a comment about it. I'm sure the guy who owns this boat would like to know what y'all think about it. I'll see y'all next time. I gotta get back to work.